Good evening, I'm Fanashe and you're tuning in to Awani Tonight. Tonight we're taking a look at the Sepang parliamentary seat, which will be one of the most contested seats in G15. With eight candidates in the fight, it will also be a hot battlefield between three women's wings chiefs. Fei Kwan, join us with more on this. Thank you, Fahana. Now, if we look at the Sepang population with its 168,000 plus registered voters, we can see that it is predominantly Malay, coming up at 71.3% as compared to the Chinese at 14.8%, the Indians at 13.4%, and others at 0.6%. But as with many other seats in Malaysia this time round, Sepang will see an influx of new voters thanks to automatic registration. Uh, in fact, now 55% of its voters will be below the age of 40, many of them in the age category uh, 21 to 29. And if we take a step back to uh, GE14, we see a three-cornered fight in Sepang with Pakatan Harapan's candidate Muhammad Hanipa Maidin uh, taking the lead with just slightly over half of the overall votes at 51.56%. Uh, but as previously mentioned, the situation is very different now. There will be, firstly, because there will be more people coming out to vote and uh, the crowd that we saw in 2018 will not be the same as the crowd this GE15. Secondly, also because now it will be an eight-cornered fight in Sepang uh, with uh, two independent candidates. Some of the main contenders, we have Brikata National's Rina Harun, Pakatan Harapan's uh, Raj Muni Aiman Atira, who will be replacing Hanipa, as well as Barisan National's Anwar Basiran. Some other notable mentions, we have uh, Parti Utama Rakyat's Dawood Leong, a lawyer, as well as independent candidate Shahrul Amri Mat Shari, who was a councillor with uh, Majlis Perbandaran Sepang. So many different players in the field this time will be very interesting to see but um, what's even more interesting besides their various backgrounds is the fact that the three women candidates in Sepang also happen to be the women's wing chief of their respective political parties. Uh, starting off we have Rina Harun who is the Bersatu Sri Kandi chief and she was also previously part of the Sepang Amno division so it's quite interesting to see her heading back into that constituency of course now under the Perikatan National banner and then we have uh, Aiman Atira, Amana's women's chief and uh, lastly Che Asma Pejuang's women's chief uh, so it's the battle between the women's chiefs here but of course, along with the other five candidates, it will be a tight uh, contest here and only one can emerge to occupy the Sepang seat. The same, of course, also goes for the 127 women candidates vying for parliamentary seats this GE15. And uh, at such a small number as compared to the 818 male candidates, it really raises the question, Farhana, of... Um, what does this mean for women representation in our parliament and uh, gender equality on the political landscape overall? We'll have to see how that turns out on November 19th. Back to you. All right, that was Faye breaking down the Sepang seat for us. Certainly, the number of G15 women candidates seems to be a far cry from the 30% target of female political representation that we've long been, talk been talking about. Now, taking a closer look into that, as well as the viability of the contenders in Sepang, we have with us Associate Professor Dr. Umu Atia Ahmad Zakwan, a senior lecturer at University Utara, Malaysia. Now, Prof, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Fahana. How are you? Good. Now, Prof, as mentioned earlier, there are only 127 female candidates this time around. What do you make of this number? Do you think you know parties have yet again failed to field more women candidates as promised? Yeah. So basically, uh, the number that we saw um, in this, uh, uh, I mean, in this election, PRU15, of course, is not so. We are not happy with the numbers. Um, because we are expecting uh, the number to accelerate um, because of the call, because of our country development. So we are expecting uh, more numbers actually. Uh, and then in fact, uh, the several main political parties also have made, uh, have pledged uh, to, to nominate more women actually uh, in, the, in, in, in the coming PRU. Um, but then, yeah, this is the reality, Fahana. The number that we see is very low, uh, 137, as you mentioned. Yeah. Let's, let's break down a little bit the female candidates mm. here. We also see women candidates mm. being fielded against other women or placed mm. in a seats with low chances of winning. 
Um, what do you make of this? Why is the case? Um, why is this the case when we're trying to feel and achieve a thirty percent target here? Mm. All right. Uh, we see that they uh, they file women against women, and they also file women um, in the we can say unwinnable seat, lah. Eh? We can say that. So why? Um, how can we understand that? I think. Um, we do not know actually uh, what is what uh, in the mind of the political party. They know best the answer, yeah. So, but what we can do is uh, we can observe from uh, from from outside. And I think um, if you wanted to understand their behavior, um, one point that we can extract is actually uh, their position towards gender equality policies. Um, I I notice a political party or coalition which uh, subscribe uh, to the, to gender equality. Um, well, they make it very visible in their uh, in their party uh, constitution. Uh, so you can see that particular party uh, founded more women, and then founded at a very uh, winnable seat uh, and at their stronghold. So evidently, uh, in the preliminary analysis, I found that uh, coalition, uh, PH coalition, especially from DAP and PKR, uh, they have uh, nominated uh, their women in, in their stronghold in the safe seat. And they have maintained uh, the incumbents, most of the incumbents. Uh, and then, uh, evidently, so these two political parties actually have uh, embedded uh, gender equality policy into their party constitution. Mm. Um, so I think, yeah, one one way to explain uh, why some political party file more women in the winnable seat is because their position towards gender equality policy. However, uh, if you look into their uh, another uh, component in the in the coalition, which is Amana, um, uh, it is it is not so um, convincing, you know, because they founded their women uh, at most very challenging challenging seats. Maybe because um, this is the first time mm -hmm. that they, they nominated their, their their women in their in the parliamentary seat. So this is a new experience to the party. So I think, yeah, so, the, so women are being found at the very challenging seat. Uh, at the same time, uh, we also can see in other coalition, yeah, like PN, um, we also see the same pattern where women are found at the very challenging seat as well. Uh, I can see a, a tool from PN. Uh, from past, uh, that uh, who can be a uh, winnable, winnable candidate, Muntaz and Zaila. And I also see from Bersatu, uh, Mas Emirati is, is in, in her state seat. So from PN, is like one or two, uh, two, two or three. Uh, so we are looking at Rina uh, seat as well. So, um, and then we also see BN. Um, uh, we are hoping uh, BN uh, to, to, to have women uh, in the Dewan Rakyat soon. From mainly by uh, from from Amno from uh, from Amno party because I see that MCA have found that all her women in a very difficult seat. Uh, I'm surprised to see that they are placed at the uh, at the seat which uh, the opponent won majority and overwhelming majority over like twenty thousand thirty thousand. So it yeah. is very unlikely MCA women will be uh, winning the seat, but. Again, saying that I'm not, I'm not going to be very pessimistic. Yeah. We are still, we, we still have, you know, uh, this election, and then we have still have a vote of young, young, young voters, voters so to counter it as well. Yeah. To yes, it, yeah. Okay. So, like you said just now, it definitely involves, you know, parties mm. being committed in the agenda to fill more women candidates as well. Thank you, Prof, for your insights on this. Now, moving on, um, nonagenarian Tun Dr. Mahdi Muhammad is making his 11th foray into a general election to save the country from kleptocrats. On Consider This, we asked him why his fight continues and what makes his pro-Malay rights party any different from AMNO or Bersatu.
Welcome back. Flash floods have struck a number of areas in the Klang Valley again this evening following heavy downpours since late afternoon. Social media users report many areas in Shah Alam, Klang, Puchong, Seri Kembangan were flooded. Several main roads in the city centre were also inundated with water. The Environment and Water Ministry has issued a flood preparedness warning for six states and territories, Penang, Selangor, Johor, Pahang, Kuala Lumpur and Sarawak until 3 a.m. Saturday. It said in the notice that several localities and their surrounding areas are at risk of flooding based on the forecast by the Malaysian Meteorological Department. Meanwhile, the services on the Klanajaya LRT line could be fully restored earlier than expected, subject to a full day's test. Caretaker Transport Minister Datu Sri Dr. Wee Ka Siong said, with the modem and power supply for the tracks having been replaced, the problem was now rectified. But the line still needed to be tested tomorrow. Dan tarikh pembukaan gantung kepada apa yang hasil daripada pengujian yang akan jalankan pada malam ini sekali lagi. Dan esok seluruh, satu hari kita akan cuba dalam sistem yang normal tetapi cuma untuk 16 stesen itu tanpa penumpang. Kerana kita kena berwaspada, berhati-hati sehingga selamat digunakan, tidak ada sebarang risiko, baru kita lupa. We said the announcement will be made at 6pm on Saturday. He added that the Land Public Transport Agency, APAD, will also need to certify Thales Group of Experts' confirmation that the rail line is safe and stable for use before operations can resume. Thales is the LRT line's original equipment manufacturer. On Wednesday, Prasarana announced that services between the Kalanajaya and Ampang Park LRT stations would be suspended for a week due to the malfunction of automatic train control ATC system. It involved a total of 16 stations. We said that Prasarana will compensate LRT users affected by the disruptions by extending the validity period of the passes. Malaysia's economy grew at its fastest pace in over a year in the third quarter. But the central bank said the outlook was clouded by the risk of a global slowdown. GDP rose 14.2% in the July-September period from a year earlier. Bank Negara Malaysia Governor Tan Sri Nur Shamsi Ahmad Yunus says, while inflation is likely to remain elevated, Malaysia is not expecting a recession in 2023. She also said that high inflation erodes people's purchasing power and savings, so Bank Negara is preemptively managing the risk through gradual policy rate adjustments. But moderate policy movements may take time to be fully transmitted to the economy. She said that Malaysia's economy is projected to grow by 4 to 5% in 2023 and continues to surpass pre-pandemic levels, while headline inflation is expected to range between 2.8% and 3.3% in 2023. In other news, China has finally relaxed some of its COVID-19 restrictions. The country reduced the amount of time travellers and close contacts must spend in quarantine and pulled back on testing as it begins to ease its stringent zero-COVID policy. Quarantine for close contacts will be cut from seven days in a state facility to five days and three days at home. Officials will also stop recording secondary contacts meaning many people will avoid having to quarantine. Inbound international passengers will also see their pre-departure testing requirement reduced from 2 to 1. China also removed a controversial system that penalises airlines from bringing virus cases into the country. The shift comes as China's top leadership body issued instructions for a more targeted, decisive approach to COVID-19 raising hopes that the country is pivoting away from a strategy that has led to heavy economic and social costs. Before we leave you tonight, we want to hear your thoughts on GE15. So, do you know who you will vote on November 19? Share with us your answers. All you have to do is scan the QR code on the screen. The results of these questionnaires will be revealed daily. My name is Fanashe. Thank you for watching.